Hi there YouTubers. Continuing this uh, project where I was showing you putting the warp on. And um, so the next thing we need to do is give you some idea what the pattern is that I'm going to be uh, using here. So we're going to take a short look at my computer screen as I'm using the PCW Fiberworks program to plan out this project. I've got the plan basically done but I want to show you a little bit about why I am using six shafts on my loom to do a four shaft project, four shaft pattern. So let's take a look at that and then we'll come back uh, to here and look down as I am starting, as I'm continuing to do some of the threading of the heddles on this project. All right, YouTubers, let's take a look at a simplified, smaller version of the setup for the pattern that I'm going to be weaving these towels. The pattern is called either Bumberette or Bumberet. I don't know if it's pronounced with the ET on the end as a French way or or not, but I'm going to call it Bumberette. And basically, if you look at the very top line where my colors are, you'll see that it's three, th three threads, warp threads of white, then three of yellow, then three of white, then three of yellow, and so on, till I get over to three of white, then three of red, three of white, three of red. The setup of the shafts for Bumberette is in, again in groups of three, but we're going down and we're basically forming a zigzag of shafts one through four, back and forth all the way across the width of the loom. Now that's great, except that there is one problem with that, and that problem is that one ends up needing twice as many petals because there are twice as many threads being used on shafts two and three as there are on shafts one and four. And that's fine for this little pattern here because I didn't use more than about, well, let's see. Shaft 1 has 11 petals, 11 warp threads. Shaft 2 has 22. Shaft 3 has 20. Shaft 4 has 10. Again, that's not a problem with this small sample. But in the entire piece that I'm making for these towels, I ended up needing about 210 petals on each of shafts two and three. And I don't have that many petals on shafts two and three of my loom. So I had to do some moving around and use more shafts than the pattern calls for. So what I'm basically doing I'm going to show it to you real quickly. I'm taking the shaft four and moving it up to shaft six. Then I'm taking shaft three and moving it up to shaft five. Now I'm going to stop that. And then what I'm going to do is take the every second thread from shaft five and move it back to shaft four and every second thread from shaft two and move it up to shaft three. So kind of like this. And what that does in effect is to give me an even number of shafts throughout the entire process and all I have to do is change my tie up 
and now the pattern goes back to what it was. So you can see in the area of the yellow, it's all fine and dandy, just the way it should look as it is in the red where I hadn't moved it. But now I have a means in here of having an even number of petals needed on each of my shafts. Okay, so from that PCW program, I printed out this sheet, and I know it's going to be hard to see, hard to, for me to put up in front of the camera too, um, showing what my threading needs to be, where I put what colors, those are shown up there, and which shaft they go on by the numbers here. I know it's kind of hard for you to see, but it's big enough for me to see, and at the moment, since I'm the one doing the threading and not you, we'll be happy with this. So the next thing I need to do is thread three threads of blue on shafts two, one, and three, and then three threads of white on shafts four, six, and five. We'll set that up out of the way. And I'll grab three of dark blue and kind of pull them over to the side here. And then we'll grab some heddles, three or two, one, three. There's a thread on shaft number two. thread on shaft number one and finally shaft number three. Now let's grab three more petals, shaft four, shaft six, and shaft five. And this has to be white so Grab some white thread, that was shaft four, now shaft six, and now shaft five. Well, that's a whopping six threads done. Let's go do just a couple more. What color is next? I better mark off that I did that so I don't lose my place. Next I'm going with the lighter blue. So it's going to be shaft 2, 1, 3, and I want the light blue. There's two of them. I gotta find the other one. Okay. Shaft two is threaded. Shaft one is threaded. And shaft three is threaded. Now we need a heddle on shaft four, shaft six, shaft five. We'll grab the white again. Shaft four, Six, five, thunderstorm outside. I don't know if the camera is picking up the thunder, but I just heard it. Anyways, you can see the process that I'm going through. 
I'm not going to make you sit through hours of watching me thread heddles. The concept is going to be the same. So you can see I've got a, a little over half of the heddles threaded and then over that way I've got a whole bunch more. That's more than I'll need but <coughs> obviously there is more. So well here we are I am done with threading all of the heddles. Um, I made one or two mistakes in counting my threads and the good news is I had a couple threads too many rather than a couple threads too few and the extra threads are just hanging here with weights on them. They won't be a problem. I'd rather have a few too many than a few too few because then how it would be a real pain to add them in later. So let's walk around the other side and you can see everything is tied up in batches in front. So the next step is going to be to put the beater bar and the reed in place and then slay the reed. But I can't do that while I'm holding the camera. It's a two-handed job. So I'm going to set the camera on a tripod. Alrighty. Here I am with the meter bar attachment and the reed already in place in it. Let me just set that down into its little notches. With these extra dowels in there, that I used to hold up the um, Lee sticks. That's a little tighter, but these dolls are going to come out in a couple of minutes, so no problem there. And now I will start to slay the reed. Okay, I'm sitting at the bench. It's back just a little bit farther, but I'm going to go behind the reed and pick up the first batch of threads. And the first one is going to be my floating selvage, and I'm going to thread that through all by itself and from this point on I'm going to do two threads at a time because I want 24 ends per inch and I've got a 12 dent reed so that's 12 dents per inch so we'll grab the first two threads and pull them through I need to move this over a little bit there we go now there's one and there's the next two threads. This is almost as putsy as um, threading the heddles, but not quite as bad. So we go through. I do like this handy dandy. Um, slaying hook. It's, I got it out at Vav Stugo when I was there about four or five years ago. There was a knife maker near them that basically used the pattern for a um, paring knife, but it's not sharp and it's got that, that little hook on the end. So you, you got a good grip on it I like to use that for slaying the reed. So I think you can see how I'm doing this. Again, there's no point in you watching me for hours. I will finish slaying the reed off camera.
And there you go, YouTubers. That is the last bit of slaying of the reed on this project. Everything is through the reed. You can see it all the way across. You can probably also hear the thunder outside. That's the end of this video. Second one on this particular project. This uh, bumberet, or bumberet, however you pronounce it. Um, set of coddling dish towels or tea towels or again whatever you want to call them. But it, I think it's going to be an interesting looking set of colors. So that's it for this time around. I appreciate you watching. If you're a subscriber to my channel I really do appreciate that. And if you're not a subscriber but like the video I'd appreciate you subscribing. In any case, thanks a million for watching. I'll catch you the next time around on YouTube. Bye-bye.